For the first time since 2019, Comic-Con back in full force and the excitement can be seen all over downtown. Good afternoon. Welcome to The Four. I'm Heather Myers. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Today was the first full day of the four day event. Hundreds of thousands of people are expected to pass through the convention center and surrounding areas. CBSA Shannon Handy is in the middle of it all. She joins us live downtown with more on the crowds and of course this huge economic boost to San Diego. I see that you are dressed as a superhero reporter. Shannon. Of course, I'm always a superhero reporter <laughs> yes, and a superhero mom, just like you are. And Carlo is a superhero dad. Uh, to say that people are excited is an understatement. You have the diehard Comic Con goers, you know, those people who have been coming for years. And then you have the first timers. Uh, I don't think these guys are first timers. Take a look at these costumes behind me. There is a lot of activity, not just inside the convention center, but as you can see, outside as well. Either way, everyone is happy to finally have Comic-Con back in person. I'm so glad Comic-Con is back. Last year they had a mini Comic-Con, but it wasn't the real deal. We love it. It looks like it's bigger than ever, and we've been waiting like two, three years for it, so just waiting patiently, and here we are. I just love seeing everybody's enthusiasm and effort they put into stuff, and everyone just interacting, having a good time. A little history for you. Comic-Con started back in 1970 with just a few hundred attendees. This year, 135,000 tickets were sold. But even if you're not going to the event, you can still come downtown and be a part of it. You guys just saw that in my live shot. You simply walk down the street, you check out all the people in their costumes, and there's all these pop-up activities pretty much everywhere you look. Economically, that's bringing millions of dollars to the area, both from hotel stays and what people are spending at stars, stores, that is, bars and restaurants. In terms of tax revenue, for the city in 2019 the last time comic-con was in person it brought in 3.2 million dollars in hotel and sales tax alone money that those folks are spending in those restaurants and in those shops is money that stays here in san diego and it's money that Stephen and i use to pave our streets house our homeless pay our police officers do the stuff that san diegans count on they depend on and expect from our city and back out here live again comic-con runs through sunday if you plan to come downtown your best bet is public transportation perhaps consider taking an uber a lyft or the trolley because as you can see it's very crowded some of the streets are closed and let me tell you guys the parking is expensive i saw a lot down the way which was charging eighty dollars oh my goodness and normally it would not be that much i want to show you guys something else this is the backpack that attendees get some of my favorite characters so if you were wondering what was on my back every person that is attending comic-con who has a ticket gets one of these really cool backpacks they can put their swag in there and keep it year-round and then i want to spin you around and show you some more costumes because i mean i'm telling you guys everywhere you look you have people like this just walking up and down the street like this is a normal thing right <laughs> you dress like this year-round no, no. you excited yeah of course i'm excited it's yeah. back Avatar. baby he's I the know, airbender right? it's been like three years or so yeah. yeah too much time well you guys look great have so much fun and you know what and thank you for putting smiles on people's faces because these characters people stop them all day long to ask for photos and they're all really really patient so it actually takes a lot of effort to come down here and dress up like these characters have done today and for the rest of the weekend uh, lots of sights to see, very yes. obvious people in costumes. Uh, not as obvious, we know there's an intense security effort down there. What are you seeing down there in terms of that? Is it noticeable? You know what, Carlo, uh, obviously there's going to be some undercover operations, which we are not told about, but take a look behind me. You can see the San Diego Police Department has something set up in the median there, and there are cameras on top of it, and that's not the only one down here. There's a command post just down the street. We've seen officers on bicycles. Uh, pretty much everywhere you look, there is security, but again, there's a lot of undercover stuff, which uh, we are not entitled to that information. You know, San Diego Police Department, they do work with other uh, law enforcement enforcement agencies to ensure this is a safe event. Obviously, with what has happened in the past during large events, it's a concern for many people, but San Diego police tells us they are on top of this. And their number one tip is if you see something, say something. So if you see anything odd, make sure you find one of those closed officers and say something so that everyone is safe here this weekend. Yeah, you're surrounded by heroes, but those are the real superheroes of this event. I'm just trying to find out who's the evil villain that's charging $80 to park. <laughs> You know, I mean, everything is up these days, Heather. Inflation, 
You know, <laughs> you go to the store, eggs are more. Make it up for missed downtown, years. Parking is more. Totally. Right. I guess, but that's why I'm telling you, take the trolley or divide an Uber with friends. Or I guess if you're going to park in an $80 lot, make sure everyone in your car uh, gives you money for that. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, four people in your car, 20 bucks a person. Carpool. Not bad, but when you have kids like I do, I can't really ask them for money, you know. So sure you can. <laughs> that's what a super mom would do. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. Shannon.